Every minute counts. Okay. Let me grab. Yeah. We'll call to order the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee for December 13th. Um, we have a quorum. Thanks, everybody, for, for coming. A motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, RJ. Aye. Shell. Aye. Don. Aye. Ian. Aye. Laura. Aye. Mr. Topham. Aye. And I think that's it. Okay. Um, approval minutes of September 21st. Is there any changes need to be made? Or is there an approval? Okay, somebody say so moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. 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 All right. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, RJ? Aye. Michelle? Aye. John? Aye. Ian? Aye. Joe? Aye. Laura? Aye. John on that. I'm, okay. I'm sure. What's that, Mike? You got John there, right? I... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'll try to go as fast as possible. <laughs> all right. We've got all a lot of fun stuff. And I have to go a little bit after 4 30, but since we have a quorum, you guys can probably keep going. Uh, Mid Island Complete Streets Projects. Mike, are you just wanting uh, just a review to update us or are you looking for direction just so I can get us in the right mindset? Yeah, for for all of these, I'm looking for recommendations from the uh, the committee. Uh, uh, we've presented these the last few meetings uh, and had the consultant here to kind of run through all the different al alternatives. Uh, I guess I would lean on the uh, the advisory committee to uh, perhaps make a motion of which alternative they preferred or which sets of alternatives they would prefer to recommend to the NPDC. Uh, once I have that recommendation, I'll send that to the NPDC and ask for their recommendation to the uh, select board, and um, I'm sure the traffic safety committee will take a look at these recommendations and it'll be a lot of review. But basically, need some guidance from from you all of which alternatives you prefer. Okay. Uh, whenever somebody asks you, like, what's your what's your favorite best movie? You, you never can think of one, but if you can say, like, what are a couple of your favorites? You can kind of get there. So I like to hear what are a couple that eat each. Each people like this could take forever, but is there one or two that stand out that that makes sense? Um, is, is that the best way to go to go about it? I uh, I would say so. Or if you have questions about any of the alternatives you want to confirm, uh, you know, this is the time to kind of uh, discuss that. Um, but I definitely didn't want to go through and run through the presentation slides one more time. Yeah. Uh, uh, unless you would like me to. No, I think so. I think we're all right. Okay. Any clarifications on any of these? Okay. Well, let me just uh, remind us. When last when we talked about this, I think we had a lot of, uh, the most controversial will be making Pleasant Street one way, either direction. And so that'd be a tough one. So I, I would suggest that that would be maybe a, a sub recommendation. We would love this if, you know, if it could work out. For the Williams Lane, Eastbound, West Brown, West Brown. Um, what what does everybody what does everybody think? Yeah, I'll just cycle to the slides that show the uh yeah, RJ. Yeah, I was I mean, obviously Pleasant Street is going to be a little bit make some waves, but I was in favor of um both of these being one way in the way that would have the less in, uh, the least impact, which I believe was alternative five or six i believe i'll go back to the master list the so williams lane going from let's make sure we're all understand what eastbound is All right that's going from sparks to pleasant one way correct going down the hill okay <clears throat> So 
So RJ sounds yeah. like you uh so um Jason. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I've been wrestling with this and I see so many downsides with changing Williams and Pleasant that I, I just remain unconvinced that it's not going to make a bad situation worse. And so I'd really like to hear from those that feel that making Pleasant Street one way where the traffic is going to go that is constantly going down there. And, um, and the same with Williams. I, I just... Yeah, so thank you, Jason. Okay, so um, let's hear some positives and advantages of alternative five and six. And, and Jason, just uh, just so you, I'll uh, just show in the the back of the presentation slides, there were some ramifications of traffic impacts for each one of the alternatives, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, long story short, any one of the one-way alternatives, that's uh, uh, five, five and six, uh, well, uh, they all have impacts to the Four Corners intersection. I mean, just boiling all of this very confusing data down to, you know, just the very essence, uh, changing anything to one way will impact Four Corners and as you know, it's already an, an, an overburdened intersection, capacity issues, lots of delays from all approaches. Um, the uh, the, the uh, uh, information that uh, Beta had put together showed that it would just be overburdened even more, primarily from the, and I think one of these actually has the, uh, um, uh, the streets on these that would be uh, overburdened, uh, primarily for the Atlantic Avenue approach. Again, there's a whole slew of assumptions. There's a lot of different yeah. re rerouting alternatives that could have been done. Uh, they took a very simplistic approach to this just to keep it from being overly complicated. And again, the uh, one-way options do impact the Four Corners intersection. Uh, alternatively, to, to Ian's point, if you wanted to uh, uh, understand some of the, the benefits of going to one-way, um, there was a uh, one of these tables did show that uh, Pleasant Street under a uh, one-way option was very beneficial to bicycle accommodations. Uh, that, that's true for Williams and Pleasant Street. Repurposing one of the travel lanes for bike accommodations does benefit uh, uh, bicycle traffic, um, whereas the, the two-way alternative, there was just minimum gain for uh, bicycle users. Uh, uh, essentially, you're sharing the road, and that the uh, uh, ramifications of keeping a, a two-way alternative would essentially turn these into sidewalk projects for pedestrian accommodation only. Um, there would be additional impacts to right-of-way um, along the corridors uh, because you're not you're you're expanding the uh, uh, the cross section of the roadway to um, uh, impact uh, abutting properties. Um, there's right-of-way impacts, additional costs because of that. And uh, I believe there was some some notes here in red about utility impacts uh, and some need to relocate some utility poles as a result of, of mm -hmm. uh, some of these traffic flow options. So that's basically what it comes down to. The two-way option is just an accommodation for pedestrians going with a one-way option. It does have impacts to four corners. However, there is accommodation of bicycle traffic. Right. Well, if I may just follow up with one more comment, um, Jason. So. Mike, thank you for putting it so succinctly. And uh, so I bike that uh, three or four times a week. I feel I'm taking my life into my hands. Uh, and so I totally get the, I would much rather see it one way to make it safer for bicyclists. But I just, I just think it's gonna become so tangled. Traffic is gonna become so tangled that, uh, that I, I'm sort of, well, that I, I run out of words to describe it. So, and, yeah, and can I, opinion, and thank can you. I, well, can I, can I ask you a question and to, to everyone else? Um, I know we can't do this in a vacuum. We can't pretend that there aren't cars anywhere and not to care that cars and traffic are going to be affected. Uh, however, we, we're making the best recommendations for bicyclists and pedestrians, knowing that 
there might there, there's a trade off and MPDDC and the planners and the select board might not like that trade off, but we can at least say this is the safest way and the healthiest way to get more people on bikes in this area. Uh, and there are there are some ramifications, and we can do this um, until we get these infrastructure um, pieces implemented, which could take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. That's just one one of my thoughts. Joe, you have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I kind of agree with Ian. I, I don't like turning Pleasant Street into one way, but I think if we could get a sidewalk, at least to some benefit. So, you know, if you want to walk your bike, you're not taking life in your own hands, or if you want to walk down there, because I feel like that from five corners to, like, say, out to a power, that is a gauntlet. You are really taking your life in your hands. So I think if that could be somehow successful, Having a sidewalk continue from five corners at least to uh, if, well go beyond, but I think that that would be a win. I definitely think that that street needs to be two way. I could see Williams going one way, um, and I think that would be important. But right now, just sticking on Pleasant Street, I I, I cannot imagine that going two way. Um, and then again, I, you know, if we wanted to try it out for a test model, I just think you would see impacts, the ramifications, and road rage, etc. But I just don't think it's going to work. So my recommendation would be keep it two way with a sidewalk at least. Yeah, I, I think Jason, with your your thought exercise, um, there's, uh, I mean, just making streets one way doesn't matter which way it will be better for bicyclists and 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 um, and pedestrians. It, it you know the point is that it, it's you know that that thought exercise you know it's it, this is very much about the traffic um have then a question you know down on uh god what is it um by the water uh you know there's a couple places in town where the lanes are marked oh and and on orange street definitely just a little bit you know in the area of marine home the lanes are marked and there's there's signage about um bicyclists you know can take the full lane you know and, and if you're doing that you're not taking your life in your own hands that doesn't address the pedestrians at all but um i mean has has that been thought about yeah we can always put share the lane uh, everywhere um, to, well, to that, put in that's the... A, that's a little bit different than, the, again, that the, it's not even sharing. It's, you know, the bicyclists take the lane. Yeah, I guess it's a share, share the road signs where it's where it gives a, a subconscious visual to drivers that there are going to be bikes there in mm -hmm. front of it. I, um, Michelle, you've had your hand up for a while. And then RJ. Yeah, um, I, I would prefer a one way Pleasant Street. I, I know that probably currently the majority uh, of the island would be against that, but we're here in the bike and pedestrian committee. So I think we should advise what would be the best for bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, uh, but, but, and then we'll see how it goes from here. I mean, other committees uh, will probably vote against it, but I mean, that that's then their prerogative. Um, I uh, think that one of um, the reasons why we need to put in a more separated bypass and so on is to make a safer, better uh, bike network on Nantucket so that more people will feel safe enough to actually choose a bike over a car. Um, and then hopefully, definitely in the summer, uh, uh, spring and fall, uh, we eventually, maybe in a lot of years from now, we'll see a decrease in car usage and an increase in bike usage. And I, I know that we can always say that with the current amount of cars being used, that we cannot create certain bypass and so on. But 
you know, then we'll probably never get to a situation where uh, where it will be safe enough for bikes to uh, go around the island. Um, anyway, long story short, I would be uh, for a one-way uh, option uh, on Pleasant Street. Thank you. Just to give some background, back in 2018 or 19, Mike, BPAC, I think Ian, you might have been on on BPAC then. Um, right. And um, Rob McNeil and all of us went and walked Pleasant Street. So we've been talking about putting a sidewalk on Pleasant Street since 2018. And so I think that's what we all would love to have a four foot, six foot, 10 foot sidewalk on Pleasant. That that would be the answer. We I wouldn't I would pick that over one way. However, is there a way that we could say we like the one way option? Here's you know the the downsides traffic. We like the one way, and if we couldn't get that or, or in unison, we'd like to do this and then get a sidewalk. That, that that could be our recommendation. Some some version of that. It doesn't have to be just alternative five, and and then we leave it at that. Laura, um, I was going to kind of continue with what Ian was saying. Like you're, you're going to get a lot less pushback from islanders and visitors and everyone by not changing traffic patterns. So yes, like a, a sidewalk would would be easier to push through because you're not going to get as much pushback with the cost of that. that that's another issue. But um, and this isn't to like like not threaten people, but if, for people. I think people who live on that road, and I know a woman who has two houses there, who's, you know, she's a summer resident, so it may not impact her too much. But if she were to find out that road is going one way, I would think they'd be a little more, I don't know if there's an issue with people's the private property, but I think people might come together to try to keep that road two ways if they live on it. So I don't know what, what um, I know in the, the second box over with the sidewalk on private property, how many private properties are impacted. And if there's been any pushback from anyone or if it's not, not even, you know, if it hasn't even been discussed with owners. Well, that, that's the question, Laura, is like, is our purview to think about what can get passed and will we make everybody mad? Or is it our purview to suggest the safest routes and other things, benefits for bicyclists and pedestrians? Like, that's kind of the tough thing. Like, you know, we're all in agreement that it wouldn't go over very well if Pleasant Street was one way. At first, maybe maybe it would get better over time. Who knows? That's that's debatable. But what are we here to recommend? And are there other entities and agencies and, and groups of people that can decide it's not the juice isn't worth the squeeze politically? Like you said, right of way um, congestion at four, you know, at, um, at four corners. RJ and then Joe. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jason. So I'm speaking from the perspective of a cyclist who's been doored out here before. Pleasant Street, the pace of traffic and the constriction, it is just not a good place for a cyclist to be on the road. And it's also not a good place for the cyclist to be on the side of the road, um, which is why I think specifically Pleasant Street, um, William Street is a little bit slower to ride on. It's not as busy as Pleasant Street, obviously, but um, I got lucky and didn't get seriously injured in 2020, but specifically on Pleasant Street, um, I personally have had a dangerous experience and would like to see it changed and think it would be the best from the cyclist perspective. And pedestrian, you see a lot of people walking there in the summer because they're and they rent a house, they're walking into town and there's nowhere to go. So they're, they're kind of stuck there. Joe? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the one thing I noticed, and uh, Michelle can kind of <laughs> back me up on this one, because uh, I know we walk by my house every day, but, um, you know, Hummock Pond Road has what is the sidewalk, but there are some times when I do travel or see someone uh, that is riding a bike and can hear a car, and they'll zip up really quickly up on the sidewalk if no one's there, and then once the car goes by, they'll pass back, and that's why I'm wondering if from five corners out to a power up, at least did a sidewalk there. And then I think beyond from out to a power, and Mike can probably correct me if I'm wrong, to the final rotary, I feel like you can get, you know, two lanes of traffic, a bike lane, 
and then a sidewalk. I think that would be most advantageous. So I think that we could get a lot of wins there, uh, you know, and then if it's, we kind of keep going forward, I do think that, yes, it would be great to have a one-way road and be able to go travel there, but I just don't see, I feel like that's going to have other impacts elsewhere and more road rage in other areas. So I'm just trying to balance everything and see from all different lanes. You know, as, as we know, if you go down a road and you eventually, every time you go there and you're running into traffic, you're trying to find every little side street. And I find that a lot of people hit those side streets and they're trying to make up quote unquote lost time when they're really losing, you know, seconds from their travel. So it really isn't a lot. So that's why I'm just curious about what happens to other areas if we did that one way. Um, I think it would be the safest thing to do, but I don't know if it's the best thing. It would be the safest thing for, for that road from outdoor power to five corners, but I don't know if it'd be the best thing for all those little offshoot streets. So that's something we should just be thinking about as well. It's just not that street, but everything that is around that area. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Joe. Okay, I think we I think heard from everybody. Uh, where do we want to, I mean, we always can see where we lie. Somebody can make a motion I and mean, it could fail or, or not fail. Um, it could be a motion to approve, you know, to say we like options five and six, see if that passes, or it could be a combo of we like, you know, the safest for the, the bicyclist is alternative uh, five and six. However, the best option would be for a bike path on Pleasant Street. Th that is the safest option, but the most costly and the longest to, to implement. S something like that? I'd make that motion. I'm sorry. What was that motion again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're making me remember what I just said. Yes, uh, I, I just, am, Jason. I think um, kind of make, making two suggestions. The, the best option for the quickest amount of time for the safety of cyclists and pedestrians would be uh, alternative five and six is the, the one-way option for Williams. However, we, I, the, the best option would, you know, to, that, but we know that would take the longest and the most costly and the most intrusive and complicated would be a, a bike path or sidewalk on Pleasant Street. So it's kind of saying like here's the the quickest safest option, and here's more of a of a long term. And we we would love the long term bike path option on on Pleasant Street. There's, somebody could say that better than than I did. <laughs> Mike, Mr. Chair, can I can I, yeah. can I just just clarify and just uh, um, I think the quickest option would probably be the one way option because it doesn't require the property takings and the uh, the yep. expense of the of the project. The short term uh, should be the I would say would be the uh, the the one way option, and then the long term, the one that would take the longest to implement would be the uh, the two way option. Um, is that what you intended? Yeah, I I mean, I, yes, because we're we we um, a lot of us here would like both. Okay. And there's disadvantages of both. So I guess you could put it into short term versus long term. And then the powers to be that are that decide um, after us could nix the the one way option. You know, traffic safety, MPDC, select board, you know, town meeting. It probably won't get the town meeting, but. Well, just, may just, I just add um, what is stopping. Uh, the time from taking enough to make a, a bike path there. And um, time, money, it's comp complicated, trees. Well, no, I understand, but I've been watching the, the, the property that is set back, you know, the white house with the yard that they've, pl they've planted trees back along where a bike path could actually go. And I assume that they did that because they understood that there might be an expansion there. And um, I guess, so I really, I, I totally, we are all on the same page about how it would be safer to make it one way and have a bike path there. But I, I don't see voting for that is a viable option. Um, so I would rather emphasize 
the uh, it's in everybody's interest to um, have a taking and uh, put in a proper sidewalk, a wide sidewalk all the way down there as quickly as possible. I think it would make it safer for everybody because the bicyclists who are very concerned can walk. And uh, so, so I would- Ian, on, on, uh, on RJ's motion, he, he said the same thing. Okay. It's just he added Sorry. in the first part, the short-term safest option we recommend being one way. And we also want this as fast as possible. You you feel that the first part shouldn't be in there? It, I, I mean, I, yes, I feel the first part shouldn't be in there. I'm sorry. I mean, we're, and I totally get it that we're the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. But I, Mr. I just Chad, do you have a do you have a motion on the floor? I hate to yeah, it wasn't sorry, technically yeah. it wasn't technically it wasn't seconded, but okay. Well, that's why I'm I'm just kind of wondering. Do we ask for a second? I kind of feel like there's a motion on the floor. Just following Robert's sorry, rule, sorry, Ian. You're right. No, no, no Joe. I'm just I'm... moving us along, Joe. Thank you, <laughs> Mike. Do you under do you understand the the sequencing? It sounds like. In the short term, near term, uh, uh, you like the one way options uh, until the long term option can become viable where it's implementing a sidewalk, at which time it'll revert back to a two way. Correct? It doesn't yes, make sense. As a sidewalk. It, it doesn't make sense. You know, well, that, that, we're, we're, we're defining the motion, Ian, so you can vote okay. against it, but we're just trying to define something so people can vote on it. So, uh, the emphasis would be on on the, on the second one. Like that's what we want as soon as possible tomorrow. But did you second that, Joe? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll all right, second well. it. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Can I can I for who seconded that? Oh sure, John. Me. Oh, John. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's go through. Uh, all those in favor? RJ? Aye. Michelle? No. Can I can I say more than just those one words? I mean, I, I, um, I want the one way, but, <laughs> but it, I agree that it doesn't really make sense that short term is the two-way bike path and then long term is the sidewalk. Um, and also, well, but I guess we're uh, not doing the discussion anymore, right? So it's either I or no. So I guess in this case, it's no, because I just don't really get it. <laughs> okay. John? Aye. Ian? No. Laura? No. I think it's and close, Joe? but. <laughs> Joe, I think I heard a no already. No. Yes. Okay, so that motion doesn't pass. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, and I'm a yay. So. May I make a second motion, Mr. Chair? Anybody can make a motion. Well, I'm asking your permission to speak since. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I make a motion that recognizing the difficulties of turning Pleasant Street to one way, we would like to see a wide sidewalk implemented as soon as possible on Pleasant Street. Um, what would be defined like a wide sidewalk? And uh, the only thing that I'm a little afraid of is that we're going to get a West Berlin situation. I walk that every day. And um, I think it's considered a sidewalk, but because Vesper Lane can be very busy. A lot of bikers sometimes are on the sidewalk, off the sidewalk. Uh, it, it, like a lot of times I get hit almost by a, a biker. Uh, uh, at some places, Vesper Lane is overgrown by grass or partly overgrown by grass. So it, it's becoming very small. Um, so, uh, like if we're going to get a situation like that on Pleasant Street, it's not going to be that much better for uh, pedestrians. Uh, plus, you will still have the uh, dangerous and scary situation for bikers. 
Michelle, uh, so, you know, so let's, that's a very let's good up. point, Michelle. And uh, Mike, if I may, Mr. Chair, Mike, what is the minimum width for a sidewalk these days? Uh, five feet. Okay, which is significantly wider than Vesper Lane, right? Yeah, it's about the same as Vesper Lane. Vesper Lane's a five foot sidewalk. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Ah, and that not everywhere anymore. <laughs> Mr. Chair, we don't we don't have a second on this just yet for discussion. And I'm second. happy to withdraw it. I'm happy to withdraw. Yeah, so let's let's withdraw it. Um, Joe. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, I grew up on Hamakpan Road, going to Vespaline, <laughs> and that sidewalk is extremely beneficial to that road. Um, I mean, as a kid, I remember taking my life in my hands, going from little league or football or wherever I was coming, boys and girls club or high school. Um, that sidewalk has been very advantageous. And I, I, Michelle, I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, it is much better than what was there by 90%. So I, and I've been on the sidewalk when people are coming by and I think that really comes down to etiquette, biking etiquette. Um, what I do think that seeing Vesper Lane being transferred over to Pleasant street, I think that this would be very beneficial to the town in so many ways. So uh, that's why I would rather see the long game, get the sidewalk in there, go through all the, you know, um, getting the properties rights uh, to allow us to get a sidewalk there. So that's kind of where I'm headed. Thank you. Well, it's, um, you know, Michelle, RJ, and myself are on the kind of like, we, we like the one way, let's implement it right now. And we'll just, we'll take the heat. Um, and the other four are, no, we'd like a sidewalk. And, and so we just gotta, we have to pick something. And so we, we get a, so we can make a recommendation. So Mike knows it doesn't mean this is exactly what's going to happen. It's just, this is a recommendation from, from an advisory group. Well, uh, Mike can, yes, sorry. I didn't raise my hand. Sorry, Laura, after you. Oh, no, I was just going to say is it because jason you were saying it in a then b or if not a then b what if it's the other way around like our recommendation or you guys don't your recommendation wouldn't be to put a sidewalk in at all like i didn't know if recommendation would be to to do that first and if that cannot be agreed upon for whatever reason b would be one way rather than yeah, I see what you're saying. It's um, we you know you can just it would take very little money, and we could implement it tomorrow to just make it one way. And if we didn't like it, we could take it back. The putting a sidewalk in will most likely take three or four years to get the appropriations to get the you know the takings you know maybe even five uh, if it's fast tracked. But that's kind of why I was saying short term, long term, um, yeah. for that. So none of these alternatives are sidewalk, right? Uh, uh, the alternatives would be existing, no changes to the roadway system. So we would just implement a sidewalk with that uh, with that option. The, the rest of them were just different scenarios right. of one way configurations. Yeah, it's it's a it's the lowest cost improvement for bicycle and pedestrian safety is what we're looking these alternatives. And and it's one way specifically on Pleasant Street, really, that we're getting caught up on. Yep. Point. Yeah. Yep. Well, well, sections, just to be clear, it's the sections of Pleasant Street. Uh, it's either the entire corridor from the roundabout to Five Corners or a section of it between Five Corners and uh, I would say Williams Street, actually, instead of Williams Lane, but that, that shorter section. Um, yeah. I, I think we're all in our head, we're all outdoor power to. To five yeah. corners is what we're all, I think, referring to in our head. That's okay. the most. That's a, that's the dangerous part. Okay. Um, it, th then just to be clear, that it sounds like alternative six is the one that you, if it was to be one way, just that one section of Pleasant Street, alternative six, that would be what you're thinking about. Um, yeah, not five. Sorry, I know I said five and six, but that just the section of Pleasant Street is what I meant. So six, definitely.
Can I make an observation about, I think, uh, well, the, the, the sidewalk option, which, uh, Michelle, it sounded like you were a little bit against it. Uh, depending on the specifics of that sidewalk, you know, at this point, I don't think we are, the details of the sidewalk is another vote later on <laughs> that, you know, if it passes this, this stage, then making sure we get it right is the, um, is another recommendation separate question. Yeah. Yeah, it's you're right. That would be another really I'm against. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, but it's not that I'm necessarily against the sidewalk. But if I uh, could choose, and in this case, I guess I can, or uh, I would go for the uh, two uh, two way direction bike path. But I mean, of course, I mean if that's not possible, and and there's going to be a sidewalk, I will use that sidewalk, <laughs> and I'd rather use the sidewalk than a road, and I. Uh, I agree with Joe that it's probably an improvement what it is right now in Vesper Lane than what it was. But I also see that there is a lot of space for improvement there. That That's why I was just saying that. But I, of course, I'm not anti-sidewalk. I like walking on sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Didn't oh. mean to, uh, to, to, to misquote you. Uh, somebody want to make a motion here that we think can pass? <laughs> Ian, you took a big Excel. This isn't this isn't Tom. This is easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're all on the same page, but we'd yeah. like to make Pleasant Street safer for bicyclists and pedestrians. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just I don't I just feel I guess I feel that if we went with a motion to go one way, that people would dismiss us, our committee, as being, you know smoking something it just uh, but yeah, i take I, I, point i do pay take your point jason that strictly speaking for safety that would be safer along that corridor but you know joe and i i think we're all worried about what is going to happen when traffic funnels along atlantic avenue when it can't go down pleasant street and it's going to be lined all the way along atlantic avenue as you know, as it already is in South Prospect Street, it's up to the windmill, you know, in the summer without. So we're sort of wrestling with an intractable problem here. Yeah. Mr. Chair, just offer a comment on that point. Sure. Um, it seems like the uh, the bottleneck there is the Four Corners intersection, if that was actually not such a critical uh, factor in your decision making. Um, it seems like this might be an easier decision to make. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's still one way, still is an overburdening of the the, the traveling public. But again, the uh, traffic impacts. I mean, the four corners intersection is going to experience most of the burden there. So perhaps the uh, the long term recommendation is actually fixing that intersection and going to the one way alternative. And the uh, the more implementable, I guess, option would be the the keeping everything two way and then implementing a sidewalk. Uh, with the understanding that perhaps the four corners intersection can be addressed at a future time. And at that point, perhaps a one-way alternative could be reconsidered. Perfect just... motion, Mike. Thank you very much. You know, I, Mike, I kind of like, you know, we could say, get something passed, uh, that the, the B BPAC recommends in the short term, the one way for Pleasant Street as it's the most, it's the, it's the quickest and safest for bicyclist pedestrian. If it uh, traffic congestion doesn't hit, you know, you know, exceed tolerable levels, and and then do the the, the sidewalk. We're just trying to get something passed. Uh, Joe and Laura. Laura, you had your hand up and you went down. Oh no, I was just going to mention that I, for me, I don't even think it's just the five corners intersection. It's that Sparks half intersection especially people coming up william street if you're coming up on a bike there you can't get a car like that's just a big cluster it's the the two intersections um i yeah i keep like what ian's saying like to picture what would happen in the summer with blocking any of that flow um 
I don't think it's it's bad anyway. It's just going to be more bad. You're not going to know. Like, you're not going to. You're now. really not going to yeah. notice. It's just frustrating. Joe, you had your hand up. Uh, thank you, Mister. Um, I mean, this is kind of a conundrum we're, we're dealing with, where I do think it should be one way, but I just think there'll be some other impacts. But Jason, haven't we done studies where for like a month or something, I felt um, uh, Broad Street at one point when they turned that a one way. They did as a as a test run for about a month and saw saw how it went, and I don't know if that's something we could do and see the ramifications and what feedback would come back from that. Is that something well, we could possibly try? I think we recommend what we think is safest for bicyclists, and then Mike adds in some other information, and then other organ other um, groups that should say, you know what, nah, I don't really like it, but let's try it for a month like they they get to decide how to implement it or take a recommendation or yeah not. and, I, and I, I think yeah, we'll, we'll be here all day if we try to figure out how to get it passed and how to i mean it's a good idea and i, I think rob mcneil he wanted to do that we almost did it during covid yeah that's what i thought just to try it out because there was no well, traffic and, yeah and i i think i'm right now i'm kind of what's the, the, the ugly phrase is split the baby but i think if you know i'm only looking at one side as far as like pedestrians, but I do think, yes, if we're going to put both this together and, you know, um, I would say that the one way would be beneficial to bikes and pedestrians. So, I mean, that's, that's where the, my fight and that's why I'm having this conversation out loud with everyone to see what everyone else is feeling. So I think if it came down to that vote and then later on, we could get a sidewalk in, I'd probably go one way and then sidewalk. So, but I'm, yeah, I'm wrestling yeah, with again, this <laughs> Yeah. It's just a recommendation to another you know group of people who are going to rec you know, who are going to take it to someone else going to take it to someone else so uh that's why i think we can be really simple and like what is safest for bicycle and pedestrians and not get too into you know thinking how it's going to pass a town meeting I, I know this isn't the case but just as an example no you're right I'm, so thank you Sure, that sounds like a recommendation to pilot a one-way option and if that is deemed not viable to pursue a two-way option with a sidewalk yeah. Great. Yeah. I think the word yes. pilot helps. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was, that was a really good conversation because it's, you know, there's process involved and, and safety. And so it gets, it gets tricky. All right. We get on to go the side path to stop signs. This should probably only take like five minutes. I, I would <laughs> ask for a vote on the, uh, the, the piloting a one way alternative. And then if oh, not okay. viable to yeah. pursue a two way. Sure. All those in favor? Okay, is there a uh, motion in a second? Yes. Moved. Second. Thank you. Ian and RJ second. Uh, all those in favor, RJ? Aye. Shell? Aye. John? Aye. Ian? Aye. Laura? Aye. Joe? Aye. And, and I'm an aye. Gosh, is that unanimous? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're all, spent, we're all spoken Ian stuff. <laughs> okay, so I I move that we uh, we adopt everything uh, as presented. <laughs> so, Jason, we have to get this done before you step off. Is is I mean we've been working at this for years, you know. Yeah. And thank you, Mike, for picking up the gauntlet from Patrick Reed, you know, to get this this far. Mr. Chair, I would ask if the uh, the motion that Ian made could be to make a re well. That, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna let the NPDC do that or where they want to take it next. So, apologies. No. Uh, to 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 approve the entire package. Do, do we want to quickly review this? Do we want to? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, yeah, Ian Golding and uh uh uh. uh, uh Patrick Reed did put together a recommendation for removing stop signs uh, on the bike path approaches to various intersections and uh, did recommend some supplemental signage to alert drivers of crossings of paths. Um, I, I did skim through it. It seemed fairly reasonable to have a group say like traffic safety or have uh, myself and the DPW director take a look at this and maybe implement this in stages. Um, I'll also note that there is you all know this too, because it was mentioned at a meeting, uh, pending legislation to uh, re-term crosswalks as crossings 
and that there be get, provide right of way pr uh, protections for bicyclists and pedestrians. Right now, it's just pedestrians. So that's something that's contingent uh, on being changed at the state level. Um, and uh, if you do recommend that this package be uh, uh, implemented, um, I would take that to the DPW director and see how we can implement that. But um, I, I did note that Ian is the record is the one who made the motion, but I don't have a second on that. Is there a second for discussion? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Well, I think this is it's a long time coming and um, we could do it and we could chop it up and do it in phases in different sections and really make it work and come, come up with a plan. So I, I think this is this is great. Are we ready for a vote? Well, I, I only had like one, uh, like a few weeks ago, I sent some information about like raised crossings as well. I don't know if that's something that we could later discuss or like, I, I, I think this is all very good, but uh, to make certain crossings a little safer. Um, I guess I if think you Michelle, vote yes for this, then later we could maybe look at that as well. Yes, I think we could. Um, and this is where BPAC can be really helpful is when we go out and we take a month and everybody goes out and looks at what do they think, like find your top three areas where we could raise, you know, and then come and make suggestions and we make a recommendation. So I think we could do that later. Yeah, I'd love to do that as well. Okay, okay ready for a vote? All right, RJ? Aye. Michelle? Aye. John? Aye. Ian? Aye. Laura? Aye. Joe? Aye. And Jason's aye. Okay. Ian, I thought you were going to like maybe throw in a curveball and say no for some reason, but. <laughs> no, Jason, no, not this time around. I'm just really pleased and thank you everybody for, there's been so much effort expended on this over the years. It's marvelous to see it. Uh, you know, reaching this level. And thank you very much, Mike, for digging that out and liaising with Patrick. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for working with me on that. Um, Michelle, the next item in the agenda is our, the next, uh, th there, are, there are three draft uh, warrant articles that could be considered at the, uh, the 2024 annual town meeting. Uh, the first one here, you might recall, was developed with, with in coordination with Kevin Marshall, who was at the police department. Uh, and this was to correct the uh, existing bylaw on bicycle helmets. Right now, it's, uh, as it says uh, in item D, any person over 12 years of age uh, must operate, must wear a bike helmet when uh, riding a bicycle. This is to correct that to uh, require 16 and younger uh, be required to wear bicycle helmets um, when on a path and uh, riding a bicycle, uh, as, as well as uh, changing the, the violation fee uh, from $5 to um, 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 greater than, uh, not less than $20, but uh, uh, not more than 50. So between 20 and $50 for the violation of that. Yep. I think it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. It was nice to have it all highlighted. You go to it and just see exactly what it was. Um, we'll do these one at a time. Any questions or comments on this one? I've got a number of them. Oh, Ian, you want to go first, or? Oh, I was going to make a motion to uh, approve this as drafted. So I, I didn't realize, um, John, that you had some observations. Go, go yeah. ahead, John. Okay, so um, I've got a, that. Uh, actually, are we just talking about D at this point, or are we talk about the whole thing? Uh, oh, we can talk about. Go ahead, Mike. I'm, I'm sorry. This was this was just the uh, the draft warrant article uh, concerning bike helmets. Yeah, right. But so we're talking about the, uh, the whole that time. particular article in its entirety, not just one section. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So section D, I'm fine with. Um, e, which is about the um, the fines. Do we know how many fines have been assessed in the past? I'm kind of a why bother with this. 
I think I think it's uh, the tension is it's not fine because it's not worth the ticket that it's written on. So it doesn't it doesn't happen. But if it's 20 or 50, the those who are enforcing it will write it and people will take it more seriously. Now, we can't we can't make it enforce. We're just creating the playing field to to make it more enforceable. OK. I, I think I think that's is that is everybody in agreement with that on that that, yes. that thinking and approach, right? And, and I would be interested then in the follow up in a couple of years to find out again it, how often it was used, um, right? Uh, but Mr. Chair, may I make a remark? Yeah. Uh, so, John, I think the answer is it won't be probably because it you know the police department is so understaffed, and um, but it's a start. Okay, that's fine. Uh, again, we don't. Again, we don't know that. We make the recommendations to create the the best, you know, safety and enforceable and that kind of stuff. We can't control who it's implemented. Joe, I uh, you just took the words out of my mouth. Oh, so, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's fine. That actually answers you know a question for me across like you know I'm sure half of the uh, uh, town bylaws. Um, and then actually, I'm just looking at it and I realized that those are, um, the, those, that's it for the, the amendments on that particular Warren article. And I just had a couple questions on, on the article as a bylaw, but I suppose those can, can wait. Yeah, we're going to do one at a time. Laura? No, oh, I actually don't have any changes on this. I did have a question at one point about the 20 inch diameter wheels but um i think part of the problem whether or not tickets are given out is that most of the people violating the helmets are kids and kids don't know the town bylaws so i don't know if it's just a matter of more education to and, and they might hear the threat of hey you could get up to 50 bucks ticket for not wearing a helmet and that might be enough to scare them into wearing a helmet but they're not even aware that it's that it's a rule that it's a, a law or a you know and that's something that we can make recommendations to uh, the chamber and the the so town departments on education and trying to get the word out. Similar to the um, the crossings being raised, what we that's something that we could work on down the road. Michelle and Joe. Yeah, I actually had a, a question about fifty-seven point two. I see that that's all uh, um, like crossed out. Uh, does that mean that we're allowed to steal bikes now? If we're gonna, um, if we're not gonna have that anymore in the bylaw, or I'm, I'm sure it's covered under some something else. <laughs> okay, yeah, as Mike... long as it's covered in something else. But <laughs> Mike, would you agree with that? Right. That's, that what Kev, that's why Kevin Marshall had wanted to strike that because that was governed by other yeah. laws. Okay, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> Good question, though. Joe? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Jason, many years ago, you had a we you and I had a conversation about doing a bike race out in Tom Nevis, and one of the things we talked about doing was getting the sheriff involved to provide helmets, and at that time, we were going to do bike safety and et cetera out at uh, the VFW um, campus. And I'm wondering if we could kind of maybe loop that back in to bring in the sheriff or the police department and, you know, give out some helmets or, or, or some way, shape or form, and then go into the schools and kind of educate them. I think if we did it or Mike did it or anyone else, it really doesn't carry any weight, but someone with a badge and in the uniform and talking to some kids has a little more weight than anyone yeah. we would. But so I, I think if we could, you know, reach out to one of those organizations to do that for us, I think it would be fantastic. And then as this article is coming through a town meeting, you know, if it passes and everything is fine, then I think they go into the schools and say, hey, this was just, you know, uh, updated and I want to bring you guys up to speed of what's going on and what's uh, would impact you all, especially on those e-bikes. You know, as Mike said, anytime he goes over 20 miles an hour, it's a total different ride, different rush. I think it's, um, you know, something we really need to be paying attention to because I I'm seeing them flying around, you know, 35 miles an hour going over the, you know, backside of uh, milk street Hill. So I just think it's something we should really get ahead of us. So we start bringing yep. it old now. Mike, you take note of that. 
Yes. I think the sheriff is, is is still giving out helmets. He has some this year. We 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 got through at the family resource center. We got some helmets from him. So that he gets a grant for so many dollars, thousands per year. So I'm not sure if it's going on next year, but we can check. Ian. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So taking up the point about the exceed 20 inches in diameter, perhaps we should add something about uh, e-scooters. As you know, I've seen people, a lot of kids going 10, 15 miles an hour and guys, you know, well, men and women going at least 15 miles an hour on those scooters. Is that something that we'd like to address? And I notice there's no definition of scooter in the definitions. And and I know if Tim Lepre was on this call, because I was speaking with him recently, he's just astounded how many kids pull into the high school on e-bikes and scooters uh, not wearing helmets. Thank you. Joe? Thank you. Yeah, and I, uh, yeah, I also feel like any child on a bike small than 20 inches is wobbling more than someone over 20 inch wheels. But uh, anyways, um, but I'm wondering if the amendment should change to, you know, bicycles, mopeds and micro mobility or something along those lines. I mean, is, is that something we could do or is that something that would have to be done on the floor? Like, we got time to still edit this. Uh, honestly, uh, and Ian was spot on. I don't think we have a definition yet for some of these other devices and requiring helmets for them. So I think that's why it, uh, it, it applies strictly to, to bicycles and, and not to assuming that the scooter would be some kind of morph of a bicycle. And that uh, I think the 20 inches is just to avoid the, the smaller bikes for. Gotcha. Well, that's actually, why actually, actually I, I couldn't say why the 20 inches isn't there. Okay. So if you want to strike well, that all together. Scooter, scooters, you know, what are they, six, <laughs> they nine inch wheels. So, I mean, that, that's, yeah. I, I guess the question is, do we change it to micro mobility or is it add that in there and, you know, kind of, broaden this scope, so to speak. Um, and I think that if a cop sees someone that's being, uh, you know, going the wrong way or whatever, they'll give a warning. But I think if if someone keeps kind of pushing the envelope, they will give them a ticket. So I, I think, you know, having these rules in place, I think they do get used and they'll be used more as people have more and more accessibility on bikes and, like, you know, mo not mopeds, but, uh, you know, scooters and e-bikes, et cetera. So. Thank you. Mike, are we getting into uh, uh I, I'm not sure. I, I I would be comfortable with baby stepping this through just covering bicycles now and then over the next year. I I honestly I would like to get clarification on these other devices that we gotta provide definitions for and then include those into this uh uh chapter fifty seven article to cover bicycles, mopeds, and the array of other. Uh, devices. Um, and I just don't know how to do that right now. So um, that, I'd, I'd hate to know. miss this year and then maybe uh, and not do it, but we can we can amend it again next year to cover that, everybody, if that's all right. I just don't know council? how to include everybody right now. Yeah, is that something town council could weigh in? Perhaps. If we had a couple months, but we this is what, I got two weeks left or you have to submit this soon? You no, know, no, I know, but I'm, I'm saying that for, to kind of ask the question and then next go around. Oh, yeah, yeah. I also think the uh, state is coming in with definitions and we could bring in mass bike mm -hmm. to, to help us on those definitions. I mean, I almost feel like I thought today, like we should almost have mass bike just join our BPAC meetings if they're available because they're just so knowledgeable, especially with stuff like this. Ian, are you going to make a motion? Uh, well, no, I was going to ask, suggest that we add uh, to exceed 20 inches diameters or any battery powered micro mobility device. But it, but I'm, I'm. It sounds as though Mike would not be comfortable with that. So if so, then I would make a motion. Okay, for a second. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor, RJ? Aye. Michelle? Aye. John? Aye. Ian? Aye. Laura? Aye. Mr. Topham? Aye. And I'm an aye. So that's a long time coming. Kevin Marshall wrote that, and we talked about that.
probably pre-COVID. So it finally got passed. And then next year we'll we'll uh, even define it more. All right, what's up next, Mike? Uh, this is simply to include definitions of uh, what a, and again, thank you, Michelle, for actually he was the genesis of this, uh, including a definition of uh, an electric bicycle, a class one, two, and three e-bike, um, as well as align the definition of what we call motorized bicycles or mopeds to align that with the definition that the state uses in the uh, in mass general law. Um, there are references to mass general law definitions throughout the bylaws. Uh, this is the one area in this section where it's it deviates from that. Uh, so it's just to correct that. And I believe that's all this article is intended to do. So. Um, yeah. I just want to applaud this recommendation. So thank you for bringing it forward. Yeah. It's it, it's smart. Um, it's it's getting the definitions in there, and then you take the go to the next step, and then the next step. So uh, well done. And this this mirrors state law. So I I think this is great. Thank you for doing the work, Michelle. Is there a uh, motion? Well, can motion. I actually ask a question first? Sure. Um, just for for the electric bicycle definition. I mean, I assume that partially that just mirrors the the state's language, carving out um, class ones and twos from class three. Correct. Thanks for asking that question. And uh, I think Michelle would agree that these are right out of mass general law right now for what an electric bicycle is. It's the identical definitions what the state uses and a class one and two are identical to what the state uses we're getting creative with class three because there is no definition yeah. for a class three bicycle in state law. Okay, right. Um, yeah, and, and my my hesitation or, you know, why I'm asking is just because I, I find having that extra definition um, starts to make it a little bit confusing by excluding something else that has the words in it. <laughs> that makes sense then uh, an electric that a class three electric bicycle um is not an electric bicycle are you saying from the the fourth one down fourth highlighted that that's what it says that's what if, it's stating if if i'm reading the definitions right um an electric bicycle is class one and class two that a is is a class one electric bicycle and a class two electric bicycle, but that a class three electric bicycle is not an electric bicycle. According to the state. Is that right, Mike? Yes, and that's why this is a little clumsy because we don't have a definition at the state level of what electric bicycle is. If if it's all right, I'll just say that this third warrant article that we'll discuss after this item is intended to align class threes with mopeds. That's the intent uh, hmm. to say uh, motorized bicycles or mopeds and class three e-bicycles. So that there, you know, there are bicycles that are labeled class three. It's just, we don't have a definition for the state. Therefore we can't regulate them. Uh, so this is an effort to align them with mopeds. Is this something that we could regulate locally, even though officially according to this, or like class three is now recognized on a state level, but could we recognize it in a bylaw on a municipality level? So that we would actually also include it into an electric, in the electric bicycle definition. I think that's our intent. Yeah, is to, that we define it in our bylaws so that we can regulate them uh, well, can, can... locally. I think my, I mean, I, yeah, I agree. It's clumsy, and I, I don't have a real good, um, because I, I understand what you're trying to do, and that, that, yeah, they're just the, 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 um, framework that exists, and that you have to work with, is, is, not there. Um, but maybe rather than a separate definition, um where it talks about the defined state defined electric bicycles just say um, rather than saying electric bicycle say class one or class two electric bicycle 
um, as defined there, which makes the language a little bit longer, but it does make it specific. And then you can use electric three. I don't feel like I'm being very clear, but I mean, well, let, me ask, that, like, let me ask you this. If, the, if we pass this as is, all of the, and it passes town meeting, everything gets, goes to the attorney general and they, they review it. They might come back and say, you got to take the class three out of there because of blah, 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 blah. Right. Or, or, I mean, could that happen, Mike? Exactly. So, I mean, when I say this is our intent, we're, we're intending to, to make these regulations, but we could be told by either town council or the attorney general that it's really not that clean. Um, I could offer Mr. Chair is that under the definition of electric bicycle, we would deviate from state definition and then say class one, two, or three electric bicycles. I don't know if that would make John, if that would satisfy his concern. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, and the other thing we could do is just, I mean, leave it as is. Yes, I find it a little confusing. The, the state may uh, have a problem with it, but um, as it is, um, we don't, as you said, we're just start, we're doing baby steps. We're getting the definitions in next go round. We'll start using them. And so maybe what happens then is that we fix the definitions when we start using them. So, yeah. you know, and I, I'd be happy enough to kind of rely on that assumption if it makes things easier rather than trying to make them perfect now. I think it makes sense, John, because the states, we're all a little behind on this. So we, we might be just in Massachusetts and different states. So we might be a little bit ahead of the curve. So maybe uh, the state aligns with us. You know, maybe we legislate up yeah. in a sense. Okay. No, so having said that, I'm willing to, I don't know, make the motion again to approve as is. I'll second. second. Uh, go ahead, Jason. Jason seconds. Oh, no, I was saying, is there a second? No, Ian, you, you got oh. a second. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? RJ? Aye. Michelle? Aye. John? Aye. Ian? Aye. Laura? Aye. Joe? Aye. All right. Oh, and, I, and I'm an aye. That motion passes. And yeah. one more amendment. And Mr. Chairman, this uh, last uh, draft warrant article, again, uh, is to align class three electric bicycles with uh, the mopeds. So uh, under this section, uh, we've added definitions for uh, class three, referencing the other section. Uh, motorized bicycles, we're eliminating the reference to state and uh, referencing our internal bylaws, which are identical to the, the state uh, uh, or mass general law. And there are a variety of inserts of four class three bicycles next to motorized bicycles. And again, the intent of this is that uh, rental of a class three bicycle is the same as rental of a motorized bicycle or a moped, and that it has to be licensed by the uh, the select board. Is there any chance, Mike, that this goes through and we're able to enforce it? You could say, sorry, class three bicycles can't be on the bike path because mopeds can't be, a, they're equivalent to a moped, so can't be on the bike path. Not, not that we'd ever be able to enforce that, but does that, would that make that easier? Uh, I, I would argue that, that under state law, um, only class one and twos are allowed on, on bike paths. That's where the loophole is in the state law. They don't reference class threes. They just say only class one and twos are allowed on the bike paths. So by default, class threes are not allowed. So I, 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 that's probably already taken care of. Um, okay. Although it's not that obvious. Um, this might emphasize it. <laughs> perhaps mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay maybe okay any questions or comments on on this one so mr jasper hey i'm here my camera's just busted thanks for having me guys <laughs> go ahead 
Um, I guess I think it's a good idea to match the state guidelines um, because I think class threes are super dangerous. I guess uh, it's important to me as a cyclist and less so as a business owner about making it harder for people to ride bicycles. So I know that class threes are, are dangerous and can go very fast, but if those technically aren't permitted on the bike path, um, you know, doesn't that push them into the streets? Um, and doesn't that kind of go against the, the idea of providing more access for bicycles on Nantucket? It's great, great question, uh, Jasper. I have a class three, so um, I, I think about that. As you know, do the, I. the next, the next step would be is uh, you have a class three, can't take it over twenty miles an hour in a bike path. I, I mean, your your mind goes right to implementing or uh, enforcement of that. It, uh, but yes, Laura. You're, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was thinking the same thing with the the bikes on the road because it's, you know, I'm waiting for a kid to fly over a car someday soon. They're, they're right on your tail and they're really dangerous. But on the flip side, I also wouldn't want to be a walker on a sidewalk with one of those bikes coming up behind me or in front of me. So I, there's really like no good in my mind, no good solution for where they should be on the road because they're not good on the road and they're not good on a sidewalk. They're not good on a bike path. Um, it's a, it's a problem. I don't have an answer for it other than getting rid of them all. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I don't know where you want to, where you want them to ride. But. Yeah. I, I don't know if we're going to um, be able to put it into a bylaw amendment to make it perfect. I think we'll have to do enforcement and spot, spot enforcement here and there through the, the lens of education and then do a ton of education on class threes and, and personal response, personal responsibility. And uh, because any, if you say just what you said, Laura, if this, then you, you implement this and then there's a problem here. And then if you go over here, there's a problem over there. That, that's all unsafe. And so uh, I think, do we like this um, bylaw amendment here again to start? and add on next year over the years. I do think it's good in this case that they're equalized to mopeds or uh, or scooters in a way that they're as fast. And um, I mean, the, sometimes it's also not the safest that the mopeds go on the road. Um, so in this case, this amendment just makes them equal to that type of vehicle. Uh, in that way, I do think this is good. Thank you, Michelle. Ian? You're, you're muted, Ian. Sorry, uh, it has no bearing on this, but you're, you're bringing up why we can't enforce a 15 mile an hour limit on the bike path or a 20 mile an hour limit, which is a separate subject. But I do hope that we can, with the new police chief, we can emphasize trying to get someone on the bike path to um, make it safer. Because like Lauren, I've uh, I, I just, I've had so many e-bikes with, you know, speed past me. It's really disconcerting. Thank you. Yeah, well, really quick on that, Ian, there's been other towns that have done, that have seen um, progress from uh, spot enforcing, just like on, on when the round the school system, Boys and Girls Club, right? Yeah. Every once in a while, you'll see somebody there with a radar gun, right? And it just gets in your head that, oh, this is a school zone, right? Subconsciously. Right. So you could do spot enforcing here and there, certain times of the year, school kids, you know, tourists in the summer. Yeah. I'm Locals. Thinking. Yeah. Joe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I feel like this summer I saw more bike uh, cops on the bike pass than I've ever seen, which I thought was fantastic. And I didn't know if they were just, you know, hoping to 
bump into someone, well, bad way, <laughs> uh, but come across someone that was, you know, going over the speed limit or uh, unsafe on the bike path. But I, I found that really uh, comforting that they were there. And I don't know if it was just that summer comp program or, uh, you know, the, the caliber of who was here that they wanted to be on the bike path and heard these, some of these complaints and, and, um, concerns. So, uh, you know, maybe that's something that they could, you know, implement more. And I, I think a conversation with the new chief, you know, really, uh, keep that going. I think that that was very important. And I, I really enjoyed looking at that. And I found the other thing of this is number one, that the certification inspection is from the building commissioner, which I found kind of funny. But anyways, that's a side note. So thank you. Well, I like this. It gives us more. It, it might not be perfect. And I don't know if the state has it perfect yet. But we're heading in the right direction. And it gives us more of a framework to work with. And uh, to, to come out and educate and say, no, 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 class three, you, you don't want to be on Milestone Road. I agree. But if you are going to be on the Milestone Road bike path, you have to, you can't really go over 20. And we're going to spot it for us. And we're going to educate. Any other questions or comments on this? Ready for a motion? Move to adopt. Second. Thank you, Joe. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, RJ? Aye. Michelle? Aye. John? Aye. Ian? Aye. Laura? Aye. Joe? Aye. And I'm going to aye. Thank you, Michelle, okay. for, uh, for the for the for the suggestions. You're welcome. <laughs> and Mr. Chair, the next item in the agenda is just an FYI. Um, there's some uh, website links that were in the meeting material that wanted to make the rest of the committee aware of. Uh, you can go to the the town's public uh, engagement website, uh, Zen City. And uh, there are questions posted for various projects that you've looked at, Tom Nevers, Wawinette, and uh, Pleasant Street and Williams that ask open questions and try to spur dialogue. So it's if you have a chance, take a look at the site, take a look at what uh, the public is saying about those uh, projects and the uh, decisions that need to be made surrounding those uh, projects. And the, the last item F uh, regarding the bike safety campaign, not a lot to share at this meeting on this, but just to build off of what uh, uh, Joe had mentioned earlier about the sheriff being involved, that's actually this item. Uh, we are getting the sheriff involved in coordinating with the Chamber of Commerce on a bike helmet and encouraging them to be used and to make it a cool thing to do. Uh, and there's an idea of a, a sticker program for a helmet sticker to uh, kind of encourage the culture of uh, wearing a helmet and uh, encouraging safety. Um, so that's that's all I have to share for those two items, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, almost every day on the bike tours for the 10 years that I did that, I'd have at least one person, usually a guy, maybe always a male, sorry guys, uh, who refused to wear a bike helmet. And one of the things we figured out that worked is we would have to you have to pick and choose how you say it when you say it but like look you look like a really I, I you're a smart guy you're smart you have a really good brain let's protect your brain because you could fall over and hurt the brain and i don't i want i want to keep all out intelligence there some kind of campaign like that like we love your brain protect it something um to, to hit that mark on on people's to wear a helmet Anyway, that was totally random. I feel like this is my last meeting. I get to sneak some stuff in there. That's a great suggestion, Jason. And may I mention the uh, email that Hillary Rayport sent to us yesterday, which she was suggesting a uh, Nantucket promote a bike to work day, and uh, and apparently the state has it. Mike, is that true? Next year it's Friday, May seventeenth. And yeah, I think so there's a national and a state one. Yeah, so perhaps we could promote that and also promote that you're, you're saying, Jason, because that's a really smart way of doing it. Yeah, it puts you, you know, we're all egocentric, right? It puts you at the front of it, so just protect yourself. 
<laughs> and right. Right. I think um I think the town would be into that. I think the town admin office and different departments and you know, human services, I you know, health department could all get in on on that on the hospital for bike to work day. And we could be a part of that. That'd be great. Yeah. Can we can we make a motion to that effect? Uh, um so have a letter that we send out supporting it, something along those lines. Sure. You want to do that now? Or do you want to do that in January or February? Uh, sure. January, February is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Can we bring that up on a following yeah. meeting. Yeah. Joe, and then I saw a hand up with Jasper. Yeah, uh, Ian. I never got that letter. Did it was something that was shared with all of us? No, I think it. It just went to um, the chair, the vice chair. Oh, um, okay. Mike, okay. M Mike, would you forward that, please? Forward it. I thought I missed something. Okay. Never, Joe. Never. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so did you have a modest, comment? Though. Too modest. Just really quickly on the bike to work day, I think that's a really cool idea, and uh, it will. Will somebody let me know when that starts to get cooking? Because Youngs will definitely. Uh, provide free rentals to anyone that wants to take take part in that that doesn't have a bike with well, with well, a helmet of course but jasper <laughs> if you put your name forward for the bpac maybe you'll be on the committee yeah maybe i'm thinking about it you guys this is a lot of uh, thankless work you guys put in here so thanks for sitting through all these meetings this is uh it's what you guys are doing is is important in the in the behind the scenes here thanks for letting me take a part in it today Thanks, Jasper. You know, and there's been times where someone either couldn't or didn't want to be an official voting member, but would still come to a meeting every single meeting and make make comments. Um, so that that's also an option as well. Not trying to steer you away, Jasper, um, but that that that's also an option for 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 anybody, like you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, any other comments from committee members? Yeah, I'd just like to thank you, Jason. It's been a pleasure working with you all these years, and you've had a tremendous effect. Uh, your input has been invaluable on many subjects, so we're going to miss you. Thanks, Ian. And, uh, when I came up with this uh, idea of a bicycle advocacy group, I found this big white paper on it's like, like 30 pages. I don't know who wrote it. So there's two different ways of doing it. You can be in with the municipality or you could be outside and kind of push from the outside. And I just I just felt like it was better to be inside, to talk to be the, talking to Mike, to talk to the DPW director, to be in, in on the projects. And so I I came to I think it was you Mike and a bunch of and they said, "Oh, this is under, this this could be under NPDC." And I said, "Great. Let's let's do it." And that's how that's how it all started. Joe? Uh, Jason, I do want to also uh, applaud your efforts and for everything you've done for the town of Nantucket. Um, your wife educating my daughters, um, you know, we're going to miss you all. Wish you nothing but the best and, and the greatest successes. So um, safe travels. That's speed. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Ian, for those comments. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chair, there's uh, one last item for any public comment. I see a, a Lynn. Um, oh, sorry. Philip, Philip Ski. Uh, any public comment? Um, I just, congratulations on your term as the Bike Pedestrian Advisory Committee. I, I know when we, when I was on the Wisconsin Civic Association, we looked forward to watching what you could all do to make um, the island safer for bikers, just as a point for you to consider in the future, Sconset runs a bike safety and scooter day every summer with the Nantucket Police Department. And it is possible to probably set up regional um, things like that with other civic associations that could spread your message. We're very firm about 16 and under wearing helmets but we did find that the bike safety officers are not allowed to give any kind of ticket 
And that would be the first thing I would advise you to have a conversation with, with the new police chief to see if that could be stretched slightly because it would make a big difference. You know, it, it can be a warning ticket first with a pretty nice kind of message on it. But I think um, I'm very pleased to see that you're moving towards a higher fine. And I now sit on the non-resident taxpayer committee and, and we also are very interested in what your committee's doing and applaud any kind of ways to make the island safer. So thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Do you, um... That's great that you do that in Sconset. We'll add that to our, our discussion on Bike to Work Day. I feel like it's all part of the same, you know, what are some initiatives that we can get people excited about bikes again? Because we all love them as kids and we get, I mean, everybody here rides bikes, but uh, as a community, um, get excited about being on bikes again. Uh, Michael, something Lynn said, can you double check on, because the, the, the community service officers, right, they can do parking tickets. Can they, by law, not give helmet tickets, or do they? Are they just um, instructed not to because of whatever good reasons, right? Legally, can they give a citation for not wearing a helmet? Uh, the CSOs. Like at least I can follow up on that. Yeah, can you can double check that? We'll do. Because uh, it might have been. Go ahead. Well, it's a good question because my understanding was that they don't have any power of arrest. And so basically, you know, if if they tell you to if if they tell you to stop biking on the sidewalk and you give them grief, then there's nothing they can do about it because they can't arrest you, you know. So I think that may be one reason why they're kept in non-confrontational situations. So well, well let's find out, out, Mike. Yeah, because because parking tickets are very confrontational <laughs> when you walk up and they're writing you a ticket. So yeah, but it's illegal to remove one. In other words, you know, so I don't know whether or not it's illegal to remove a ticket if they're able to tape it to your bike handle. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, thank you, Lynn, for sitting through this meeting and uh, all the work you're doing and for those comments. Appreciate it. Sure. Any other public comment tonight? Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Michelle? Aye. RJ? Aye, and thank you, Jason. Thanks for everything. Best of luck. Thank you for teaching me how to public speak so I can come to these uh, now. <laughs> so best of luck. Thank you. You're welcome. John? Aye, and good luck, Jason. Thank you. Ian? Hi, and Merry Christmas to you and your family, Jason. Thank you. Laura? Hi, uh, and we will miss you. Thank you for all of your work. And Joe? Hi, and happy holidays, everyone. Take care. Yeah. And I, we we are adjourned. I'll, I'll probably see you in January. I'll be on island for a couple of weeks in January. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike, for everything you're doing. Thanks. Mr. Chair, Thank it's you, been a Mike. pleasure. appreciate you. Thanks, Mike. We'll be in, We'll be in touch. I'm going to stay in touch. You bet. All right.